Hi, Christina here, founder of Liberate. I wanted to let you know that all of our amazing practitioners, healers, and intuitives are available for remote sessions. And we are continuously adding new classes, workshops, and meditations to serve you every week. Thank you for joining us, and I hope that we can help you liberate yourself. Hi, this is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, where we educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we're going to be looking at astrology, but specifically how you can use it as a tool for self-discovery and development within your own life. And so we have... Eleonora here from Eleora. Eleora. <laughs> wow, I'm still getting used to it. But I want you to check out, she's doing all of the Lunation uh, videos that are on our YouTube. And so I know some of you are tuning in from podcasts and on an audio platform, but please check out our YouTube because this beautiful woman over here is doing some fabulous work to really make things simplified and give you the guidance for the tools uh, for the weeks ahead. So welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to have you here Yay. too. Getting you in front of the camera. I um, like it. <laughs> <laughs> so Ellie, if you want to um, share a little bit about um, maybe your your journey in astrology and how you, you got to the point of saying you see it as this useful tool and how you see it as such and everything along those lines. And we'll keep on diving in that way. Um, that's how we kind of do things here. Yeah, definitely. Well, I have been into astrology since I can remember. My mom is super into spirituality as well. She used to read tarot cards, like not professionally, but just for herself and her friends. And she really got me into astrology, especially before I moved to the U.S. about 10 years ago. She was like, you really need to know yourself. You really need to know yourself outside of home and, you know, family and who you are, like in this place that you've been growing up in. Um, and she gave me my whole chart. It was like a 30 page report <laughs> of like everything, every breakdown of every planet. Like I couldn't believe what I was staring at. And I just like, I had this thirst to know more. I was like, oh, this, like I can see patterns and explanations and like reflections of myself in this wheel that I didn't know where it was coming from. And I think that's really helpful because then it, kind of helps you navigate situations where you know how you're like naturally going to react and you're like oh okay I need to take a, a, a moment just like a beat space and really like think before I respond uh-huh so I think like basically astrology is a language you know it's it's a language that you need to get familiar with it's like learning Spanish or you know Russian or whatever it's like you need to have patience and you need to really dig deep into what everything means and how you can see it playing out in your life as well I like that I've, I don't think I've ever quite had somebody describe astrology in that in that way but it so makes sense that astrology is like a language it is you know, yeah. like, but I mean like literally like I don't know how many times I've talked to people on astrology and nobody stated it like that but it just it clicks because it's like okay yeah you're understanding and there's this this art and science to it mm -hmm. and when you learn it it's kind of like the art and science of any language where you can find the poeticness in it and the storytelling in it but you can also see you know, the logic and reasoning. Oh yeah, definitely. And I think that's one of the things that made me want to dive deeper into astrology. Cause I was like, obviously a lot of people are like, oh, that's not real, you know, pseudoscience and whatever, like we're not, you know, the planets don't control us, which I agree. The planets do not control our actions, but they're a reflection of events that happen on earth and in our lives it's like astrology is the study of the correlation between celestial bodies and events that happen on earth you know what i mean so it's not like the planet is not making us do one thing it's just reflecting the way that we act and react to certain situations people events you know what i mean um yeah absolutely so, and check out yeah. your little scorpio necklace on too today i gotta represent <laughs> represent my sun sign but yeah i mean and that's why like a lot of people don't 
relate to their sun sign or like the sun sign culture, you know, because they have so many other factors in their chart, like usually how you come off or how you perceive the world or like kind of the filter that you have on life is your rising sign. So like that's your most like it's your first house. It's yourself, your identity, like who you most resonate as, even though your son might be in a whole completely different section of your chart, you know, but. That's interesting. And, you know, when you're sitting there talking, one of the thoughts that pops in my head is the aspect of, you know, I think a lot of people that dismiss astrology or like look at it is, is I hear this argument a lot as I hear, well, what does that mean? Everybody in the world fits in one of 12 categories. But really, when you look at it from this more holistic, like chart aspect, like not every person has the same personality traits and given different circumstances and different environments, people are going to act differently. Mm -hmm. You would never expect like your child or your boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife or mother or father or whatever to act the same in each environment. In fact, put, put them in this, uh, you know, put them in you know, uh, a laid back Sunday afternoon environment mm -hmm. versus a very like high stakes work environment, put them at, you know, like a fun, like sporting event. Some people have these different personas that come out given what their different influences are. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I'm hearing this and I'm like, OK, I think that maybe a lot of people, they're stumbling upon this and they're like, OK, astrology for tools. There's cl clearly a curiosity for astrology. But looking at that aspect of saying, OK, if you can study this like a language, you can see how it is impactful of these different personality types or these different elements of yourself. So you're not just a Scorpio. Exactly. Yeah, I'm not. I'm a Libra rising, a Capricorn moon, you know, Scorpio Mars. You have all these placements and all these different areas of life that these planets, you know, act through. That's what your houses are, your different areas of life. Like the planet is the actor and the sign is just like the role that they're playing, like how they're showing up in that mm -hmm. area of life. And this is one of the things that made me want to get more into Hellenistic and traditional astrology because there was a lot of logic and reasoning into why the planets were domicile and the signs that they were and like why they had their fall and these signs and what they why they had their exaltation in certain signs you know what I mean so that's that's why I was like oh my god okay so there's actually like reasoning logics years and years decades millions of years like in studies that these people were recording all this data from even like the Babylonian times, you know what I mean? So it's like, who we, okay. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. It's great. Yeah. It's a lot. It's definitely a lot, but I encourage everybody that's diving into astrology. Even if you like more modern astrology, like it's got to start with the traditional. You got to know why things are the way that they are and what the logic is behind that. Otherwise, you won't be able to build a sustainable practice because when people come up to you and be like, well, why is that that way? Yeah. You need to be able to come up with an answer or like to pull it out from your knowledge hat, from everything that you've been studying and just be like, oh, well, because they were looking at, you know, the patterns and it makes sense how they calculated this or whatever. You know what I mean? So it's, you need to, but you need to understand it from a bigger to, perspective. Exactly. And that's why I say it's a language. You need to understand the history of it, the, the, why it is the way that it is, even though some of the languages are like, this is the way that you say a word and it doesn't have an explanation. It just no, is what it is, you know? And, and yes, <laughs> however, a lot of them have like, it came from this and this is the root and this mm -hmm. is the origin or that there's rules to follow and, you know, this wording is spelled like this if it's here, but if, if it's like this, it's like this. You yeah. Know? But think about it on that level is how much study and and in time it takes to really understand that i mean look at where i don't know i mean i'm just gonna look back at your language example because i like it but a, a little kid that's just learning how to talk even when they're 
you know, a young little kid, maybe in elementary school, they still don't have like a complex understanding of the linguistics that mm-hmm. they're using and the type of words and even the type of sentence structures are more more simplistic yeah but as you go more advanced and then you know by the time they're in high school they're creating all of these different you know so the more that you study the more you can see the more that you can pull different aspects i'm sure Mm -hmm. yeah definitely it's it's a lifelong study honestly like i've been diligently studying and trying to expand my knowledge over the last what three years and i'm still learning new things every day and being like oh damn, how did I think of it that way? Or it's just like different perspectives, especially when you start to follow other astrologers and interact with them and really get into the astrology scene, like going to conferences and seeing how many people practice practice different branches of astrology and how their perspectives are all so different but so valid at the same time. Because you're not going to get the same reading for the same thing, even if you go to multiple astrologers, everyone is going to have something different to say about your chart. Everybody's going to see it in a different light because everybody's different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody perceives. But is there some kind of common theme that people are all seeing, though? Like, you know, because there's a baseline? Yeah, obviously. Um, obviously, you have, like, the planets are what they are, you know what I mean? And, and to a certain extent, they will signify certain things. But... It's like an intuitive reading. Sometimes people tap into different messages because they have studied different things or they have lived life a a different way. So they can interpret things a little bit differently than everybody else. Mm -hmm. So you get, I don't want to say you get the same message because to a certain extent, some of them are going to say the same thing, but that's the beauty of like, everybody's going to see something different in their yeah. chart. Everybody's going to have a different reaction to your placements. You know what I mean? Like I have Venus conjunct my ascendant and for most astrologers they are like, Oh my God, that's, that's a thing. You know what I mean? You have Venus and domicile and their rulership and it's conjunct your ascendant. Like you're probably a model. And it's just like, I'm not, but you know what I mean? I wanted to be an actor, you know, it's just like, so it's like, there's a common theme, but some other people might look more like my Mars sun conjunction or some other people might be like, Oh, you're Jupiter in the 12th house. not doing so, you know, it's like different, it's different, different ways to interpret the story. Exactly. Which is helpful because you have different narratives and you have different perspectives and then you can put them together and guide yourself through that for, through, you know, multiple stories multiple pieces of advice which is i I love which which there's never one one way or one way of a story i mean like look at you know every perspective and there's 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 never one answer right for anything in life yeah and there's never one perspective for anything in life Mm -hmm. and that goes probably back to the element of like free will and like when you were saying that they're not controlling you but there is an influence and so you know when when you're getting these different perspectives and you're using astrology as a tool it's like okay this is the guiding force and and there's that but there's always this other angle right Mm -hmm. you know i don't know how many different angles you can have but it feels like it's almost infinite you know like people are looking at us right now but are you staring in at me while I talk are you seeing Ellie are you seeing all of us are you having the perspective of like close up are you far away are you watching on your cell phone or your Mm -hmm. your computer monitor do you have it blasted on your big screen tv you know using Roku or something you know like and and even in there what if you were at the top looking down at us or at the down looking that or behind us Mm -hmm. looking every narrative is different and um I'm getting a little off topic, but going back to for all of the people that are joining and and listening, we're talking about a lot of different generalizations and how important and how the different perspectives of astrology. But if you had to, like if some people are looking in there, like maybe they found out how they can utilize or look at their chart or figure out their, their whole chart, what kind of uh, steps or tools are, are pretty like, you know, simple, but effective for somebody to like kind of start their journey of an understanding of what they're looking at. Cause it just looks like a, it looks like a circle with these random lines all over with these spots yeah. everywhere. And you're like, I don't even know what that, that's, that's 
little spot looks like. It has a little line like this. And then you're trying yeah. to interpret like which planet is that because I don't know. You, you're not really seeing those symbols represented as the planets mm -hmm. that often or like it's not that ingrained in you in school or anything. So then you're like, okay, what's these double lines that swirl or what's this one with the thing? And you're like, hmm. <laughs> it's like, what is it? Yeah, definitely have a have a glyph key handy with you. I didn't even know that's what it's called. So yeah, right now it's just like, like this. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, it's it's hard it's it, it's definitely um a lot it's a lot of information so you got to remember that you need to be patient and you need to take your time and not rush through because it is a lot of information and like you need to really sit with it and be like okay explore it especially when you're exploring your own chart don't take for granted like if you go to a textbook and you're like okay I want to see how my Mars and my second house and Pisces is working you know what I mean I want to see what how my assertiveness is through that lens of Pisces you know what I mean being very spiritual very wanting to be there for other people and supporting other people being very sensitive and emotional and also very adaptable um just try to see yourself in situations just like, oh, OK, so how do I act when I'm put on the spot or when I'm really passionate about something or when I really want to get fired up about this project, like your drive, your passion? How do you see it unfolding in your life? And then go back to the textbook and be like, OK, so how can I relate to this? How does this reflect what I go through in real life? And that's kind of how you you start weaving it together, just comparing or really thinking about your life experiences in the lens of that planet like whichever planet yeah. you're trying to like start with one planet at a time if you want to start with your ascendant and the planet that rules your ascendant is usually the best place to start um because that's kind of like who you are and so then from what i'm hearing to like uh kind of um put back on you is that if you use it and you kind of start one planet at a time but you mm -hmm. use, use it as this more better understanding of yourself yeah in a way so that you know i i find that a lot of people make themselves wrong for certain things they make their they wish that they had different different types of traits or that they should be a, there's a lot of shoulds that go on in people's mm -hmm. life like i should be more like this or i should be more like that or okay. why why do i not feel like super motivated when i uh, when i wake up or why do i feel like i i want to isolate more and i actually don't like crowds but society tells me i should be super outgoing and that i should want to go to concerts and things all the time and yeah. there's this like there's this battle that happens and from what I'm hearing, it gives you this like narrative of this understanding of these are your influences. So almost in a way, somebody can sit back and be like, ah, well, like it says here that I actually have more of a tendency to be introverted and, mm -hmm. you know, sit in and I like ho home and isolation and time by myself. Yeah. And then, oh, maybe I don't have to fight that element of myself. Yeah, it can give you a sense of comfort and it can also give you the tools to achieve that. It's like if you if you're a homebody and but you do have like FOMO, you know, like you do want to be with friends. I haven't heard FOMO in a while. I just spent. <laughs> but it's true, you know what I mean? Because it does happen to me sometimes. Like I'm a moon in the fourth house. So like I love being at home. That's where I feel comfortable. That's where that, that that's my ground zero. That's that's everything to me. Mm -hmm. But being a Libra rising, I also like I want to be with people. Like I want to talk to people. I want to, you know, mingle. I want to concentrate on the other person. So it's learning how to work with what you got and just being like, OK, so maybe I can just go out one day and just really be there for my friends and then have them over the next day, you know, or just yeah. like the next weekend and just do a party at my house, you know, where I feel comfortable, where it's where, where it's safe, where everybody's going to be great. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of like it gives you the tools to be like, OK, I can work. It's not impossible to want to be something even if you don't see it in your chart, that that's that's the promise. That's the promise of the life that can unfold. You can work with everything. You can really work with every aspect, every planet, no matter how shitty their position is in your chart. You can always turn that around and work and work with the positive qualities and the positive aspects and help 
that planet succeed in the way that you want it to. That's the beauty about astrology. It gives you all the knowledge that you need to develop yourself and to really get where you want to be and working with what you got instead of taking the wrong turn and trying to do it a way that it's not really going to resonate with you. Yeah. And I like that because you get, because some people do want to experience other, other aspects. And even if they want to experience it, just to experience it, Mm -hmm. right. You know, like maybe somebody doesn't want to, um, I don't know, uh, live a life being a vagabond, but they want to maybe do a backpacking trip and Mm -hmm. feel comfortable and safe doing that. And Mm -hmm. like, how do they utilize the influences to, support their energy and their body to be able to do that yeah well how does it come when okay so there's these there's these influences on each individual person Mm -hmm. and then i often hear people talk about like and you do this too the forecast of like what's going on on the collective right Mm -hmm. so explain that a little bit for, for for people like okay so why is there this other bigger influence and how does that interact with your personal influence Yeah, so everybody has a birth chart because everybody was born. So you do have one. Um, And when I talk about what's coming up in the forecast, that's basically the birth chart of the moment, like right now where the planets are right now. And if you put that, if you take that wheel and put it on top of your birth chart, they're going to fall in certain houses in your birth chart. So that's how they influence you. Like you might have Saturn in your fifth house, but Saturn right now might be in your ninth or 10th or fourth house transiting. Therefore, you can feel these qualities of discipline and isolation and a lot of restriction and no's in another area of your life that's not the one in your birth chart. And Mm -hmm. it might be aspecting your Saturn in your birth chart. So everybody's going to react to the mundane astrology differently because everybody has different placements, different risings, different houses. You know what I mean? So, so would this be why, like, I'm sure a lot of people have heard of like Mercury retrogrades. Is this why like certain ones like affect me so much and certain ones I don't even notice? Yeah. Like, and it'll Mm -hmm. be odd. Like one will make me like have like all this disarray and one will be like, Oh wow. I was like more productive than ever before. And I'm like really pushing things things forward and then yeah. sometimes I'm like what people mention mercury retrograde I'm like I don't even notice it you know like yeah. but I it doesn't seem to affect me the same even throughout the year because it's always in a different sign so and that's why it affects and that's why some people come into the shop and be like oh mercury retrograde everything's going crazy yeah. somebody else will walk in and be like I don't know. It's like, it's fine. Maybe they, you know, they're not that active in that area of life or they're very comfortable with revisiting, you know, subjects or, or topics in that area. But I you like know? that, like, sandwich plan thing because, like, if you take that and you pop it on that, if it's affecting you more, it's affecting you more, mm-hmm. you know, wherever yeah. that alignment is. I- yeah, but it's good to kind of know, obviously, and I have a hard time with this even because sometimes I do want to plan like my week and my moves according to the mood. But as we all know, like 2020 is just, it's it's just (laughs) such a shit show. Speaking of 2020, you know, have you you kind of looked at the rest of the year and also maybe like, depending on when people are tuning in, maybe like what, what's kind of in store for 2021, at least as far as the landscape, how's it looking? Yeah. You know, 2021, (laughs) I still haven't touched that subject because I'm like, okay, I think, I think 2020 is really rough. Um, We have, like, as I like to call it, the Capricorn Mafia in there. We have Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn in Capricorn. They're all retrograde. They're all taking their sweet time in there. And so that's, like, still to come? Yeah, well, yeah, because they're still, all three of them are still there. Oh, so they're in there right now? Yeah, they're in there right now. They have been in there. Pluto has been in there since, like, 2008 in Capricorn. So we've Hmm. we've slowly, Capricorn is a lot of themes of authority, money, power. Well, in 2008, we had our financial collapse uh, worldwide. And we've been seeing a lot of, you know, a lot of, And I don't think we've ever, I think we've, falsely recovered but i think it was just a printing money thing everywhere and, yeah, and, and wherever okay. you are you know are. like 
Exactly. Every country is like, dee, 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 dee. bank bailouts, that's fine. <laughs> Fraudulent loans, let's keep going. It's like, okay, <laughs> all right, you guys. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting once it moves out in 2024 and seeing. Oh, it's a. All the way until 2024? Yeah. Dear Pluto, he moves oh, so slowly. Oh, my God. Like, I mean, like, this, this, has been, <laughs> this has been intense. And, I mean, I feel like, at least for me personally, the last three and a half years of my life have been intense. And then this one, I thought, like, things were going to get easier. And it was just landslide more. Yeah. And, and, and Saturn has been in Capricorn, too, for the for since December 2017. So, you know, Saturn... That's when, like, that was about the time things were getting real bad Ooh, for me. Loud. <laughs> I'm excited to see where Capricorn is in your chart. Um, yeah, you know, so there's a lot of themes of authority and just, like, a lot of no's, a lot of cutting, a lot of restriction. And when Saturn went into Aquarius for that little bit, in 2020 back in March or April I think I feel like things were a little bit like oh, okay all right we're breathing just a little bit more but then it went right back into Capricorn and it was like no we're not doing this we're, it's just there's a bunch of no's in here it was just no 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 that was probably when people were like oh the lockdown's not that bad yeah I and then breathe. Right. I'm kind yeah. of enjoying I'm studying I'm this that's you know, exactly like, what happened and then it happened. was mass chaos yeah, it was like uh uh we're shutting it all down again we're not going anywhere so you know it's interesting and funny seeing how like Things can indicate and reflect things that happen here. Um, but yeah, I mean, most of these planets, Saturn and Jupiter are going to move into Aquarius come the end of the year in 2021, which is going to be, I feel like a more, I don't want to say revolutionary time, but more of like an activism time, humanitarian. The end of 2021? Well, no, the end of 2020, oh. um, Jupiter stations direct. Did yeah, you see the end of me September. like have a heart attack oh here? I'm not, I, I'm not even that big into astrology, but I'm like, <laughs> there's some things that some of these astrologers have been saying predict in this chaos. And so like, mm -hmm. I, I'm like, all right, all right, there, there's something to this, you know? It's just, yeah, I don't think, and not even being a pessimist, like I don't think it's going to get that much better in 2021 or, or the next three years for like you know <laughs> but no but it's gonna it's necessary change it's yeah. necessary like very pluto it's just like the destruction of the system and everything that's just so messed up right yeah. now no I and mean, has been you know and, and I've, I've had some uh times that i've mentioned it on other podcasts and uh youtube videos and things like that but I do. I feel like, you know, in order to make change in anybody's life. So, I mean, we're looking at this on a global aspect mm -hmm. and a different in societal aspects and governmental aspects and financial aspects and and environmental aspects. I mean, literally every sector is being hit pretty hard yeah. and uh, health aspects, our healthcare system, like li literally like every system that we've built, you know, or we're a byproduct of is is being shined. But you know, when you when you take it to just yourself, sometimes the most difficult times in your life and when you push yourself into something like maybe it's, you know, moving to America for school and doing it like it's like it's a challenging time. It's like a it's like a growth. It's like it's like almost like a kid going through a growth spurt and having growing pains and like feeling that. But as a result or when you push yourself really hard in workouts or so that's when you lose weight or you get really fit or you get really you know like your endurance and that but it's not just jogging mildly if you want to mm -hmm. actually make a difference you have to push yourself yeah, yeah and and in those pushings and in that pain you actually grow yeah and yeah. so, I mean, it's not all doom and gloom for everybody. And if we can met, I know not. it's hard when you turn on the news and, and what is news anymore, because I don't think it even exists. But, you you know, it's, it's you know, like that, that's another whole thing. That system's crashing, too. But when you turn on the TV and you see this squawking voices and <laughs> these different opinions being cast upon that's what we'll call it yeah 
Uh, it, it's, it's a little hard to feel not super overwhelmed. And, you know, when at least like in America, we're feeling like, okay, there's a lot like we're sitting here. And I mean, I don't know when people are going to watch this, but we're sitting here like holding on to our feet, like wondering, are they going to pass this other stimulus? Are they going to do other things? Oh no, there's a recess. It's, this. it's like, and everybody's sitting here like, what are you doing? Like in Los Angeles, we're still locked down. Yeah. We mm-hmm. haven't, we haven't opened yet. It's, it's been <laughs> six, six months. months. Yeah. And I don't think that's stopping anytime soon i've heard no like uh i mean and and then if if the fall gets worse like we're locked down through the rest of the year i I mean i I don't see where anybody in la could think that we're not getting Mm -hmm. not locked out or uh, out of lockdown by the end of the year so we'll be in for almost a month or a year (laughs) and you know like a lot of people are sitting there like this but if you can step into it if you can find the hope if you can say where did Mm -hmm. where do i get to reinvent myself what Mm -hmm. do i want to stand for in the world and see created yeah and you know pull the fog step back into your center like literally go back to yourself and how you can work with your your uh why do, can't i think of, like your surroundings you know what i mean because yeah. you can't control what happens you really can't control events like things are going to happen whether you do whether you wake up at nine in the morning or at 12 at night you know what i mean like things are going to happen around you but you can always control how you maneuver them and how you react to that and how you show up for those things by getting to know yourself And I think astrology is a great way to do that. Like, I mean, spirituality in general is a great way to know yourself. But no. And you said that you look at more like I don't I I don't know the exact word. You said two types of astrology. One was like more like normal or or what what were they? And is there any resources or websites that you would recommend if somebody's like, okay, well, where do I start? Because as you said a little bit ago, there's so many different areas of study. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, but you said the best is to start with the foundation, like the basic, but like you used a word for it. So I want to see. Yeah. So the foundation is basically traditional oh. slash Hellenistic astrology. That's the word. Yeah, Hellenistic, Hellenistic. Which is I was more, like, I was like, you said a word that I hadn't heard before, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> which is great, and I love the word Hellenistic. I'm like, ooh, what's that about? Um, yeah, that's where I I would highly encourage anyone to start because then you get like from the old old times. It's like this is Babylonian period where, you know, it's just like, oh, okay, so they really weren't into some shit back then even. So well, if I mean, it they survived, were build- they were building buildings and and, stuff, and, yeah. and sundials and everything and you they know, were really deci- out of this de- world. Mm-hmm. Decisions weren't made without, you know, an astron astronomer astrologer or an astronomer, astronomer. Yeah, you, you know, know, like going there and giving like a certain advice but i mean mm-hmm. the buildings like some of the pyramids are built in like like literal placements of of astrology and in stars and in planets yeah you know because they think think like back back then they probably didn't like clocks didn't exist like time didn't exist that's that whole thing they probably measured time with like yeah, studying no, that, the stars well, well that's how I mean? they came like, up with time so you know? it's like there there is a foundation like it's literally right there you can't tell me it's not real because i see the planet right there like the sun is giving us life right now what does the sun stand for vitality ego like it, you know what i mean so it's like it's very much there you just need to fight the logic behind it so you can support though so you can support that and and you know to know that it's very much there of feeling the difference i mean i think a lot of people feel the subtle effects or major effects of a mm-hmm. full moon right mm-hmm. there's even a science behind that more more crime and more hospitalizations happen on a full moon than other times yeah it's a culmination of so much energy yeah and i'm always there's a, an observatory in los angeles uh, uh the griffin park observatory and when i go in there there's there's this one thing that i always like it's shows that this is a part of the 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 world that the tide based on the moon changes up to three stories mm-hmm. and it's like jaw dropping and they they did like a little bridge underneath and then a bridge three stories high and the person standing on there and then like the when the water's full and it's like that changes by a moon cycle that that's like yeah. a, a, like if it changes water that much how could it not change you 
But yes, with yeah. this Hellenistic astrology, do you have any like sites or information or a book that you might recommend that if people yeah. are like, okay, like I want to learn a little bit more. Of mm -hmm. course, I would recommend that you watch Ellie's videos that she does and follow her on Instagram and get all of that stuff and put all the handles below, but any other like information? Yeah. Um, I highly recommend Chris Brennan. He is a traditional Hellenistic astrologer. He has the astrology podcast, so many episodes on everything, like the rationale behind everything, the logic behind the planets, exaltation schemes, anything, you name it. He has done an episode on it. Um, the astrology podcast is great. Highly recommend that. I took a course with Marin Altman. Um, she's also a traditional Hellenistic astrology and she's doing a course as well. It's an eight week course, super packed with good information. What I, about like for somebody to learn and see what that chart looks like? Is there like, Ooh, yeah, you, know, you, you know, can, like, because like, it's like, okay, everybody kind of knows they can look up and say, oh, all right, I'm a Libra. But then like, how do they find out like that, that circle wheel and that wheel, yeah. Um, websites astro.com is a great website to pull up your chart um, time passages app on your phone is great too to pull up your chart and also to have like daily horoscope as well uh, that fit with your chart and every single placement oh that's cool so yeah that, so, mm -hmm. and then these sites i, I think i've used astro.com so, yeah. and it's it's pretty cool like you know you get and you can see it and you can look at it and then you can take that and at least you know yeah, then go, go and, with, and listen mm -hmm. to some of ellie's stuff or some of these other uh individuals that she's recommending but to actually see what that yeah. little cool wheel looks like yeah and there's extensive books like parker's astrology is a great one chris brennan also has a hellenistic astrology book which is that is a lot is very thick it's a lot of information but it's very worth it um and then yeah all you need is your exact birth time birthplace and birth date and you're set to go. The reason you need your exact birth time is so your ascendant is in the correct degree. And that way your ascendant sets up your whole house system, like where okay. your houses fall. So you want to make sure you get that right. And if you don't get that right, you're kind of screwed. It will, yeah, it, it, you might not um, relate to the significations as much because it won't be in the right sign, or not the right sign in the right house. Gotcha. You know, so it might not resonate with you, but there's always astrologers that do rectifications as well. If you're not really sure, like if you have like an approximate birth time, you can sit with an astrologer and they'll go through like a series of questions and they'll try to rectify your birth time to get the right ascendant so that you can get the right um, set up for your chart. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Cause yeah. I mean, I know some people that they're like, our, my parents lost it or mm -hmm. they didn't really pay attention or like, you know, or some people are adopted, you know, yeah, it's a privilege don't. to have your birth time. So if you do have it, I do encourage that you dive into this. And if you don't have it, there's always people here to help you. There's rectifications and you definitely can figure it out even if you don't have access to that. I like that. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know about the, the people that specialize in rectification mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah. So looking at and all of these different aspects, what would you say would be maybe two tools for people to really like two tangible tools to really walk away with? Um, you mean as far as like how? Yeah, yeah. To? Like I, I mean, and 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 maybe it's maybe it's a, a an understanding. I, I I'll rephrase the question. Maybe um, two sections within the chart that are really impactful for somebody to look at and to understand how to use um, any recommendation of a tool or an understanding of how to integrate or look at that in their life. You know. Yeah, definitely. I would say. For starting uh, to work with your chart, definitely look at your first house because that's your identity, your body, yourself, and whatever planet rules that sign and wherever that planet is in your chart. Those two houses are probably going to be very prominent themes throughout your whole life. Um, okay. So that's, that's a really good place to start. And then honestly, with integrating everything together, it's just a lot of listening to other people's interpretations as well. And 
reading a lot and also coming up with your own delineations. So taking the information that you've learned and kind of studying, it's just like, okay, so how do, how does this apply to my real life? How can I convey this in a personal way where I'm, I'm, you know, figuring it out by myself and not just speaking somebody else's words, which might be very correct. That's not to say like that is inaccurate, but you need to find a way to communicate that, especially if you want to pursue astrology as a career, there's got to be a unique way where you, you know, come up with a story and how you weave everything together. Cause not everybody's going to be the same. I love I it. I guess. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. Weaving mm. the stories together. It's a little bit of grim news for the next three years, but <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. It's, change. All, it's all about how you perceive it. Right. Yeah. You know, like, mm -hmm. Either look at it and say, all right, uh, look at what I lost, or you say, look at what I'm gaining. Right? Yeah, look and at the opportunities that yeah. the losses provide. Because, I mean, with. come on. I mean, there's sometimes people continue to try to patch up a broken house and pop sometimes on a new you just got to burn it down. And, yeah. and, and, uh, and and then it's molded and there's there's uh, this little um what do you call them termites that are eating everything and they're patching everything up patching everything up patching everything up uh, it's like it'd be cheaper and better if you just plow it yep. down and say okay let me design what i really want instead let me really recreate it because i never really liked the layout anyways yeah Mm -hmm. You know, and I think for a long time, we've been trying to do patchwork, patchwork, patchwork on so many different aspects of everything yeah. that it's like, OK, the leaks are still happening. The roof is still having the leaks. The termites are still getting in. The window's broken. Like, it, when are we going to stop trying to patch it? Yeah, it's like there's no there's no fix in this. Yeah. It's just got to start anew. Well, on that note, I really appreciate you, Ellie. Appreciate you. Anything else you want to leave everybody with for one last closing statement? Um, no, just be kind and patient and gentle with yourself. Check out my Instagram and my lunation videos. And I'll be here. <laughs> yeah. I love it, love it, love it. Um, I love how she said no and then she gave a statement. <laughs> yeah, definitely check her check her videos out. They're amazing and a lot of people are really loving them. She comes with a great, beautiful heart and a very clear, uh, concise way of explaining things that are relatable. Uh, thank you everybody for joining. Please like or comment this video below. If you're listening to the podcast, um, you know, share this with others. Allow people to get this information. We're providing free content for people to really start to elevate and liberate their life. So uh, share it share it like it do all that great stuff and until next time thank you if you enjoyed this conversation like it subscribe and share it with your friends if you want some more amazing resources on your path of liberation head over to liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list connect with us on facebook instagram at liberate hollywood all one word or liberate emporium all one word until next time liberate yourself A reading is uh, shared time and space with someone who is spiritually connected. An opportunity to get clarity and reassurance, um, guidance on any area of your life that you may feel stuck or not in flow with. So readings are basically um, extremely helpful for you to make decisions that needed to be made. For having clarity on life's questions, healing, um, empowerment to move someone from fear to being empowered. When you're feeling stuck, when you can't answer the question yourself, when you find yourself in a little bit of a spin out. I don't think there's anything that a reading is not good for. You know, the perfect time for a reading can be any time. We are constantly changing, so we are constantly coming up against obstacles or reoccurring patterns that we need to check in with. When things just feel really heavy and dark and you might be a little confused about some of the things on your, on your path, maybe certain relationships or opportunities. So we all have blind spots, so when you find yourself in a blind spot, that's a really good time to get a reading. So readings are good to check in to find out where your progress is through the eyes of someone else who's holding you 
in the highest good for all concerned. Change is always good ultimately, and sometimes it's hard to see that, and readings bring you back to that center of what it's for for you. 